Honestly, Sarge, I think it's a dead end. Connie? Well, Sarge, as you know, two dead bodies were found after a report of 1016 at the Clark residence. Any suspects? Well, we have Valerie and Scott Clark separated, their daughter Quinn, and then Valerie's new partner, David Ferguson. Were you able to piece together the series of events? Well, after talking to the coroner and the boyfriend, we could determine that the husband was a bit of a loony. Look, Hannah, I know you're old school, but we're not allowed to call them that anymore. Uh, Connie? At around 8.30 on the evening in question, Scott Clark entered the residence, unbeknownst to the family. A meat cleaver was missing when doing a full house search and was found on the scene, leading us to believe that Scott entered through the kitchen and used this as his primary weapon. It's a Japanese cash coin. Some sharp. Uh, uh, yes, uh, thank you, Hannah. Where were, now, where was I? Uh, unnoticed, Scott proceeded through the house towards his daughter's bedroom. Upon entering, he came across Valerie Clark putting Quinn to bed. Scott grabs Valerie and puts a knife to her throat. Quinn screams, then alert the partner. After his arrival at gunpoint, it would appear Scott was packing heat too. Uh, a short heated argument occurs, ending abruptly with Scott slitting his wife's throat. As she lay on the ground, bleeding to death, Scott apparently has a moment of clarity, realising what he'd just done, looked at Quinn and David, said, sorry, I must be leaving now, and blew his brains out. Apparently, his medical record showed he was schizophrenic, and he developed severe psychosis and unavoidable rage. I told you he's a few fries short of a Happy Meal. Uh, what? How's the little girl handling it? Uh, Quinn, was it? She seems to have developed PTSD and is having weird-like trances, um, zoning out and having glazed eyes, not talking and seeming terrified about everything, as Mr. Ferguson put it. We'll be sending over a psychologist to see if she can talk through her troubles. Not jobs. There are not jobs. Thank you, ladies. I remember it like it was yesterday. From the corner of my eye, I could see the angry sky throwing lightning and causing a racket, the trees doing their dark dance of death. The sound of rain being thrown against my window. It's all so familiar. Then the ticking of my foolish clock became louder and louder and louder until all I could hear was my blood rushing through my ears.